Good morning, welcome to News Superfast with me, Harish Upadhyaya. First up, Chandra Babu Naidu will be sworn in as the Chief Minister of uh, Andhra Pradesh at the auspicious moment of 7.27 p.m. today. The swearing-in ceremony will be held at the sprawling 70-acre ground outside Acharya Nagarjuna University at Nambur village between Vijayawada and Guntur. This is the first time that a Chief Minister will be taking oath at a place away from the state capital. Though Andhra Pradesh has been divided into Telangana and Simandra, Hyderabad will be the common capital for both the states for the first 10 years. And Chandra Babu Naidu, who has got a mandate, will be sworn in at 7.27 p.m. this evening. Several top leaders from the NDA fold have been invited for the swearing-in ceremony, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But will Narendra Modi be part of the swearing-in ceremony is the big question. Chandra Babu Naidu will be the first Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh after it was bifurcated. <laughs> Top leaders from the BJP like L.K. Advani, Murli Manohar Joshi, Union Minister, and President of BJP Rajnath Singh, M. Venkaya Naidu, Arun Jaitley, Prakash Javdekar, Nirmala Sita Raman, Sadanan Gowda and Piyush Goyal and several other Chief Ministers from the neighbouring state like Navin Patnaik from Odisha, Prakash Singh Badal from Punjab, Manohar Parikar from Goa, Shivrat Singh Chahan from Madhya Pradesh, Raman Singh from Chhattisgarh and Vasundra Raje from Rajasthan and Anandi Ben Patel from Gujarat have already confirmed their participation. Meanwhile, police battalions took over the control of the venue. Andhra Pradesh DGP J.V. Ramudu visited the site and reviewed the security arrangements. All goods and passenger vehicles passing through the national highway between Guntur and Vijayawada will be diverted through the alternate route. No vehicle ex except for those coming for the swearing in program will be allowed to enter into Guntur district. Most of the VVIPs arrived by special chartered flights to Kannavaram on Saturday night itself. Around 200 rooms in Star Hotels in Vijayawada have been reserved for stay of VVIPs, including the Chief Ministers. Two helicopters are kept ready at the Kannavaram airport to take VVIP straight to the guest house near the venue. Meanwhile, the nation has yet to recover from the rape and murder of siblings in Badao. Back home in Karnataka, a nine-year-old girl was allegedly molested. She escaped in the nick of time. This nine-year-old girl was playing in her garden. But little did she know that she would be assaulted by a stranger. Yes, this person you see on your screens is Prasanna Kumar. When this little girl was playing, this was the very person who dragged her to a bush nearby, muzzled her and tried to assault her sexually. As the girl was not found for a long time, her family members launched a search for her. As the search began, they heard her screams. Though Prasanna tried muzzling her by shoving a piece of cloth in her mouth, the girl shouted with all her might. Sensing immediate danger, Prasanna took to his heels. The little girl ran out of the bushes, but the bruise marks on her body indicate the extent of her assault. <laughs> The girl lodged a complaint with the paper town police, Badravati. In her complaint, she has named Prasanna Kumar as the one who tried to sexually assault her. Based on her complaint, the police rushed to the spot and conducted investigations. 
It is said that Prasanna Kumar was infatuated after seeing the picture of the girl in an album when he visited his relative's marriage. Incidents of rape and molestation are increasing by the day across the country. It's high time the authorities did something concrete to weed it out. Baswaraj Yarganavi, News 9, Shimoga. Going on, a property issue between family members got out of hand. Take a look as to what the head of the family did to his own son in Belagavi. This couple is being treated in Kanapur Government Hospital. Shantaya Hiremat and wife Sangeeta Hiremat were victims of an assault. You will be surprised to know that Shantaya was assaulted by his father Chennaya Hiremat, his mother brother Nagaya Hiremat and his wife. The issue according to Shantaya was the uneven distribution of property with his elder brother Nagaya. When Shantaya questioned the disparity, he claims he was assaulted. Shantaya said that his father and brother hurled chili powder in his eyes before assaulting him with sharp weapons. When Shantaya's wife went to his rescue, she too was assaulted. Shantaya claims that when he and his wife tried to escape, both of them were chased and thrashed again. Other villagers admitted them to a hospital. The greed for wealth and property can make people do strange things, even turn family members against each other. Chandrasekhar Chinkekar, News 9, Balagavi. A new revelation by forensic experts in the sensational Badao rape and murder case has forced the case in a new direction. Take a look at what the police had to say now. There is a twist in the Badaoyong case. DGP A.L. Banerjee has revealed that one of the two girls who were raped and hanged to a tree was not confirmed as rape by forensic experts. According to the DGP, one of the girls was an only child and had three brothers, so property could be the motive for the gruesome crime. The DGP also added that several important factors have come to light after a team of forensic experts examined the spot. Two policemen have been suspended for negligence in the case as it is the forensic team which found crucial evidence at the spot. The UP police is now answerable to many questions as the forensic report has rendered the police's post-mortem report as false. According to the reports, the girls were killed before they were hanged rather than the police report that they were killed by hanging. The DGP also added that following the new revelations in the case, the police was now planning to conduct a narco and lie detector test to get more details on the case. A news stand report. Moving on, three people were killed and four others were injured in a cylinder blast at an illegal refilling station in Kachiguda in Hyderabad. Houses in the close vicinity of the refilling station were set ablaze by the explosion. Local MLA Krishna Kishan Reddy and Telangana Deputy Chief Minister Mehbu Bali and Fullest Kamashna Mahendra Reddy visited the spot. The injured have been rushed to the nearby hospital and several fire tenders were rushed to the spot to try and douse the flame. Several houses devastated, cutted in this massive fire that was triggered in an illegal refilling station which has claimed four lives. The magnitude of this fire was so huge that the Deputy Commissioner, the Commissioner, the Deputy Chief Minister of Telangana region, all of them 
visited the spot to try and assess the damage and see the rescue and relief operation. Moving on, sources suggest that Professor Rajiv Gowda has been nominated to the Rajya Sabha from Congress from the state. This comes as a snub to senior Congress leader S.M. Krishna. But S.M. Krishna has confirmed that he will not quit the party. Speaking to News 9, he said that he was a loyal and dedicated member of the party and would not quit under any circumstances. S.M. Krishna will address a press conference on the issue at 9 a.m. today. Remember, there was speculation yesterday which went on to say that Professor Rajiv Gowda has been given a Rajya Sabha birth from the state instead of SM Krishna. SM Krishna, BK Hari Prasad and others tenure in the Rajya Sabha came to an end last August, last March, beg your pardon. After, after that, there was hectic lobbying in New Delhi and AICC sources are claiming that now Ra Rajiv Gowda will be given a Rajya Sabha birth instead of SM Krishna. There was also speculation that SM Krishna might quit the party if this indeed holds true but later on he confirmed to News 9 that he is not planning to quit the party under any circumstances and he is a loyal worker of the party. Remember, Prof Professor Rajiv Gowda was one of the candidates in the primaries held for the Bangalore North constituency. He was defeated by C. Narayan Swami, who went on to beca become the Congress candidate from the Bangalore North parliamentary constituency. And looks like the High Command has decided to reward him for the loss in the primaries. Professor Rajiv Gowda is the official spokesperson of the Congress party. He is also a professor at IIM Bangalore. He joined the party just a few years back and now looks like he will get a go-ahead for the Rajya Sabha ahead of SM Krishna.